I heard them say over and over, you're trespassing. If you don't get up and go back to Dewey Square where you're allowed to be, you're going to be arrested. So at that point, I knew that I was going to stay for the principle of the matter, and I knew I was going to be arrested. People my name is KC Mackey, it's just a K and a C, and I'm a junior at Boston University studying philosophy and political science. For two years I've been the president of Students for Sensible Drug Policy at BU and when I heard about this movement I understood that the two main issues were corporations too involved in government, the government being very corrupt because of that, and the extreme economic disparity where the top 1% of America has all the wealth and the rest of the people are suffering because of that. I'm a part of the 99%, but I'm in the top of it. I'll admit that, and I feel so blessed to be. There's people that make bad choices and are left with, are left homeless, or don't make the best financial decisions, and are left, you know, without a job, without a home, without enough money to send their kids to school. But you know, there's also a lot of people that are just good, reasonable people that are trying as hard as they can to make ends meet and the system just doesn't give them enough opportunities to do so. much about the economy actually and that's why I'm going down to Dewey Square to learn. It's just a place of love and support. It's a platform for networking. You know, I think it's really important that the people involved in this movement have a physical space, a constant physical space where they can go and network. And there's people there that have lost their jobs and their homes due to bank foreclosures and it's a place that they've been able to come to to sleep and get food and there's so much sharing it's just a really great community it's like a commune um, it's just it's it's a place of knowledge and activism and it makes me so happy that it can exist and when i go there i just i feel so good the general assemblies are very focused on getting consensus from people which is, and this is the symbol that is used to um, make sure that everyone agrees with what's being proposed and if there's not, there's more discussion. I understand that the movement is um, something that needs as much help as it can get. So I go and just help at the food tent, help wash dishes, help make posters. I'm not specifically involved in um, people that are drafting proposals and direct action that are forming the marches, but I want to be there for the marches, just to add to the numbers, because I think right now it's a preparatory stage of just getting attention and letting people know that we don't live in a democracy and people's voices aren't heard. Well, I joined in the march, the Solidarity March, on Monday, and that was beautiful. There was music, it was very peaceful, the cops were so cooperative, I think it gave everyone a lot of hope for how many people actually care. At about 11.30, the cops showed up, and they were just waiting in front of us for a long time, making sure that we were more contained in Dewey Square and shutting down the expansion of the Greenway. I heard them say over and over, you're trespassing. If you don't get up and go back to Dewey Square where you're allowed to be, you're going to be arrested. So at that point, I knew that I was going to stay for the principle of the matter and I knew I was going to be arrested. People around me went limp, tried to resist, but my friend Ned and I just stood up and basically put our arms behind our backs for the police. We were put in those plastic zip tie handcuffs 
and the cop led me very peacefully and nicely to the line where people were being put into the police cars. I was arrested at 1.30 a.m. and I got out of the courthouse at 5.30. Um, it was a very long night and day, but when I got out, Occupy Boston was there just like they are in Dewey Square and all over America, wherever they're occupying. We all have each other's backs in this movement, even if there's vastly differing, differing ideologies between, you know, anarchists and socialists. There we're still all working together and trying to put aside our differences to create the best possible world that we can. The people in the bottom of the 99% that need people like me, they need our support, they need our help, and they need our voice. What's really beautiful about this movement is that people's voices are finally being heard. They finally have a place where they can share their concerns, what they think is wrong, and there's so many people there backing them up, clapping for them, providing them with food, providing them with a sleeping mat if they need it. And it's really just the basic humanity of everyone that's involved that I think is giving people hope. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what